Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melia Revia. I'm up here today at Immortals with Mikey. How is it going, John? You know, it is a little damp out. Fall has definitely arrived, and in Cleveland, that means all the rain. Just darkness. Kinda. kinda yeah, yeah, kind of. We got a little bit of that going on. Yeah, sure. How about you? I mean, I've been feeling the same way. It was a gloomy day today. Fall is here. It's about to get really cold over here. Oh, you know it. And, you know... I can't complain, though. Well, that little chat on climate is actually really relevant to the book we're going to talk about today. What a lead in. Yeah. I mean, it was perfect. Clearly, you planned <laughs> that uh, because we're going to talk about campaign builder Castles and Crowns. This is a book for your 5e setting from Cobalt Press. They had a pretty big team that worked on this, but it's about setting up a whole, you know, nation state, right? Your, uh, basically your castle, your crown, your nation and the country and a big part of what establishes that country is the climate, right? Yeah. And so kind of a good fit there. So this is a pretty recently release. Uh, it's coming from Cobalt Press and they had a big team that worked on it. Uh, the Kickstarter was last fall, October of 2023. Okay. They had 3,700 backers and raised a little more than a quarter million dollars. Wow. So, yeah, they had a pretty solid team there. And this is actually the second book of a series. Uh, the first one, Cities and Towns, came out, I think, last year. And they currently have Dungeons and Runes in development. So these are a really cool set of products that kind of create a master class in how to build your campaign setting. So you can build your cities or your towns, you can build your nations and your nobility that rule over the nations, and you can build your dungeons in the places that the characters will explore. Not sure what else Cobalt Press might have in mind for the line, but uh, you can definitely see other opportunities there. Uh, but we're just going to talk about this one today, and presumably, I mean, it is a 5e book, but I'm guessing that they are building in compatibility for their Tales of the Valiant line. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that line at some point in the future. Have you heard of that one, Mikey? No. So Tales of the Valiant is Cobalt Press's alternative 5e rule system. Okay. Basically, they've got their own version of the Player's Handbook and Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual that are generally compatible with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but just a little different slant on it. And oh, nice. Under their own imprint so that you don't have to worry about... Uh, what Hasbro might yank out from under you. <laughs> yes. Right? Pinkertons at your door. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, there's an intro. Book opens up with an intro, and they give you a great breakdown of different noble titles. And actually, I don't know, I've been reading fantasy books and gaming for 50 years-ish, and uh, this is the best introduction I've ever seen to that, where they say, wow. you know, first you've got like emperors and then kings and queens and then princes and then dukes and it breaks it down all the way down to you know your uh lady and sir you know the very bottom of the noble titles all the way up to the top it's it's a really solid breakdown uh after that the first chapter is noble heroes it's around 30 pages and it gives opens up with a range of new heritages uh some linked by lineage which i'm pretty sure is a thing for Tales of the Valiant. Uh, and then we get into threads, which are kind of a new character element that provide a bit of a framework and a mechanical system for downtime activities. And you get nine different examples, and these have goals and milestones. Kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that Cubicle 7 did in their books, but uh, mechanically it's a little bit different here. Uh, and then we get, uh, so those that are set up, we have Ambassador, Court Artist, Court Wizard, Courtier, Gentleman Bandit, Illegitimate Scion, so you've got the, the ba <laughs> literal bastard, uh, <laughs> Impoverished Noble, Minister, and Royal Champion. Uh, and then we get some courtly subclasses. So if your character is going to be at court, maybe you don't want to take the traditional class. You might want something that's a little more focused on this. So for the Bard, you have the Jester. Seems like a natural uh... fit. For the Fighter, you have the Knight. For the Ranger, you've got a Courier. And for the wizard, the arcane advisor. So if you really want to play Merlin, you're arcane set right advisor. there. Arcane advisor, what a yes. title. Chapter two gets into courtly campaigns, really, you know, why you'd want these kinds of characters. You get 50 pages of that. Uh, it opens up with factions. So you've got elements working within the court. 
Usually, you know, multiple elements are going to be in conflict at different levels. And they talk about some examples of different ones. You've got arcane, aristocratic, criminal, always fun. Divine, if, you know, you want to have one or maybe more religions uh, that are trying to get the king's ear. Mercantile and militant. Each of these different factions have their own goals, have their own persons of interest, motivations, locations, and then you get a nice range of plot hooks and adventure hooks for if you want to build an adventure off of one of these different factions. Uh, then we get into courtly life and events, again tied into these factions, and a nice look at warfare, particularly since we're talking about castles, including siege elements. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which segues uh, into the next chapter, chapter three, which is on sites and settings. And we get a detailed look at castles, manor houses, military strongholds, and monasteries. You get a really thorough anatomy of each of these structures, what types of facilities they're going to have, what, how those uh, different rooms distinguish those different structures from one another, and then the outbuildings that you might want to have, you know, basically nearby facilities that a castle or a manor house need in order to function, mm -hmm. right? Uh, your stable might not want to be right next to the keep or inside the walls just because uh, things might get a little smelly sometimes. Wow, so you really have that power to literally change whatever you want about Oh, absolutely, yeah. Are. I mean, this is a, again, this is a masterclass in campaign building and it covers all of those different elements that you want as you build up your country and your castle, you know, your various strongholds. No pressure. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, the next chapter after that is Royal Magic. We get about 20 pages of this. 10 pages of that are magic items. Uh, crowns, not shockingly, feature kind of heavily as key magic items since, you know, the title of the book is Castles and Crowns, right? That's true. Uh, and then we get about 10 pages of rituals. So if the king commands perhaps his arcane advisor to do a big honking spell, it might be something that takes a little more time than what you can do in, say, a combat round. Nice. Yes. After that, we get chapter five, which is Rulers and Kingdoms. About 80 pages here. Starts out with building a kingdom. We talk about size. We talk about population, climate, trade, culture, religion, and magic. So all of those different elements come together and they give you a lot of different angles on it so that no two kingdoms need to be exactly the same when you're varying these. Talk about rulers and both their physical appearance, how people perceive them beyond that, and what kind of backstory they have. Maybe they are a conqueror or maybe they're somebody that kind of fell into the situation. Those different kinds of setups are probably, and where they came from, going to set their tone or their intentions as a ruler. Uh, and then we talk about kingdom type, and we break that down by lineage with really detailed examples for human, dwarven, elven, fairy, infernal, and space kingdoms. Space kingdoms. Yes, so if you want to tie this into, say, Spelljammer, very natural fit for that part of the book. Some climate complications there. I would say, yeah, <laughs> uh, though you never know what magic can do. Uh, after that, we get a 32-page appendix with monsters, NPCs, including rulers, and some random tables of names, regalia, adventure hooks, and a whole lot more. This is a 270-page full-color hardcover from Cobalt Press. It's 50 bucks, and we have it here on the shelf at Immortals, Inc. I'm pretty sure we also have a map pack that can go with this if you want to have uh, some handy kingdom examples for how you build things, or maybe just, you know, a map to use as the bare bones for building your kingdom. Uh, it's a really cool book. I'm really excited about the way this plays out. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get Carlos to pick up some of the others from the series because these are really solid tools for somebody that's starting out and wants to really just breathe life into their campaign setting from the ground up and make everything, you know, well thought out and consistent. It's it's just a great process the way they've set this up. Very well said, John, especially for somebody who, like you said, is new and doesn't know where to start or doesn't even know where to find inspiration. This is a huge inspiration. And, you know, even if you are accomplished and have been through this before, there's a system here. There's kind of a checklist. So you're not going to forget something. Yes. Very well said. Till next time, folks. Good gaming.